another episode of With the Chiefs. Wait, 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 wait. Man, I need more rest. I hope you've got, I've got your last name right there. It's a very good pronunciation. You should know better than that now, Dom. I know. <laughs> All right, uh, welcome back to another episode of With the Chiefs. Today, we're lucky to be joined for a second time by Alex Shaw. Uh, Alex is an extremely talented runner who's recently ticked off the massive milestone of running sub 230. Um, Alex ran Gold Coast, uh, running a time of 228.53. Alex, welcome back to the show. How are you, mate? Thanks for having me. Uh, good to be here. I'm very well. Thank you. Um, yeah, second time round. Good. Friend of the show. How good. Yeah, yeah. Um, normally we just do a bit of a training update. I don't know. I mean, obviously, <laughs> there's probably not a lot of training going on. But do you want to just give people a bit of an update as to how you're feeling after the marathon and what what you've been doing recently? Yeah, no problems. Um, uh, yeah, not a lot of training going on at the moment. Uh, have had two jogs since the marathon yesterday and today. Um, neither of which were well. Today was okay. Yesterday was horrible. Um, just yeah, still feeling pretty tight and and sore. Um, but yeah, it took seven days off uh, post last Sunday. Um, so yeah, just didn't do anything and, and definitely needed it. Um, was probably walking downstairs backwards for the better part of that uh, the working week. And um, you know, it, it wasn't necessarily um, enjoyable, but it is hard earned soreness. So uh, yeah, it was. Hasn't been doing too much, mate, and I'll just be um, building back up over the next little while, but but jogging all this week. Yeah. Do you remember it being? Do you remember it being that bad after your after your last marathon? Uh, I don't think was it, it was. I don't worse? think it was as bad uh, after um, the last one. The first one might have um, might have been this bad. I think, but pure shock. But yeah, been a long time between running that far and. Um, I mean, I'll, uh, I was having a chat to, to someone the other day and sort of said, I'll just keep telling myself that sort of if you get it right um, and you go deep, then it should hurt a lot. So uh, that's yeah. what I'll continue to convince myself of that anyway. <laughs> yeah. Dom, do you remember, or well, more recently, you've done obviously ultra, ultra events, which have induced similar yeah. sort of pain. Like, yeah, that same thing though. Like if you just push that extra bit more. It takes so much out of you. Like I've done um, runs where I've, I've gone pretty hard, but not quite to the well and you pull up fine. Um, but if you're just like giving it everything and really go to the well, it's such a big difference and yeah, just ruins you. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. Yeah. Definitely not much of a training update if there's no training, but so, um, <laughs> <laughs> Dom, Obviously, you've you've had some activity recently. You're away at the moment. What's um, what's been happening with you? Yeah, well, um, I was meant to have the the big hundred miler on Saturday, but things didn't quite go to plan. Um, yeah, coming off COVID, uh, the race was what I think eleven days after I tested positive, so it was always just going to be a bit of a um, I don't know, a bit of a gamble, and I'd have to get pretty lucky to finish it. Um, so yeah, going into it, I ran a little bit <clears throat> during the week and on all of those runs, I, I didn't feel great. Um, I think just, yeah, my lungs and your heart and everything's like playing up. You feel like you've lost so much fitness. So I think just my headspace, there was like a lot of doubts. Everyone's telling you like, don't do this. Um, <laughs> like you're an idiot. <laughs> so yeah, I got to 47 Ks into it. Um, and ended up, yeah, pulling out, um, it was like kind of just when it was really starting to hurt. Like um, I think there was 2000 meters of elevation over that 47 Ks already. Um, so it was just like running hills nonstop. My quads were cooked. Um, it's kind of the point where I think you really have to like want it if you're going to keep on going. And with all the, everything else going on, I was just like, no, nah, it's just not worth the risk. Um, so yeah, I, pulled out luckily Beck was there um to pick me up so got in the car with her and headed home and um yeah tail between my legs and get ready for the next one but uh yeah I don't know I feel all right now though um I think that yeah I've getting my fitness back and recovered pretty well so keen to just kind of 
slowly get back into training and get started again. But um, yeah, yeah, that's how my week's gone at the moment. Yeah, on holidays though, up at Noosa, so just kind of chilling out, relaxing, um, which has been pretty good. I think I need a, a, a bit of a break. So yeah, mm. what about you, Smee? How, Me, um, I will go into that in a moment, but it's not very active. But one question for you is, um, I guess. How many times did you want to pull out of the race during given you had all that stuff <laughs> going on yeah, in your head? Seven. I'm just yeah. <laughs> was it really was it just up, down, up, down, up, down? Especially given you're still I mean, even to get forty seven Ks in, considering you've just had COVID is pretty pretty wild in itself. Yeah, it was like um I started off like pretty good. It's pretty um crazy start. Like it was like five AM in the morning in the dark. And you go bang like straight onto this really like rocky um, riverbed, riverbed. So you're like just scrambling in the dark over these rocks with everyone, um, and it's just like, oh shit, what are we doing? Like, is this what we signed up for? Um, but then it, it got all right. It like kind of opened up into just um, kind of relentless fire trail hills the whole time. Um, uh, so yeah, running like through the dark was all right. I was kind of like enjoying that. Um, and then I got to, I was kind of, I went out way too quick as well. So um, I was with the the leader, Vlad Shatrov. He's like a 217 marathoner. Uh, he's, I think, like won a bunch of ultras and um, all this crazy stuff. So had no business being up there with him. Um, <laughs> did you know that when you were, yeah, did you know did, that after the fact? Okay. <laughs> yeah. I think I, I ran about 5Ks with him and then let him go. Um, okay. So I was in like second, um, just like, going along all right and kind of enjoying it and stuff, but probably going a little bit too hard because it's a hundred miles. And um, I think I just couldn't get that concept of how to pace it um, in my head pro- around, around it properly. So um, yeah. yeah, I got to the first checkpoint and was doing okay coming in, in second. Um, then about probably, I don't know, 25 Ks in um, the guy behind me passed me and he was, he was looking really strong. He just like had found his kind of zone um, and was just kind of chugging through it. Whereas like I was a bit more kind of sporadic with my pacing, like slower on the uphills and faster on the downhills and stuff like that, um, which I think kind of just took it out of me a little bit probably. I just was probably a bit underdone. I hadn't done enough training to run 100 miles on a hilly trail course like that. Um, so, yeah, then at about 30 k's in, I was like really struggling. Um, could hardly even run anymore. Was kind of just doing like a, a walk run sort of thing. Um, and then I took a wrong turn um, and I realized <laughs> about, I tried to look on my phone to see if it was the right way or not. I, I had a like a suspicion that I, it was probably the wrong way. Um, but my phone was like locked because I think it'd been in my bag kind of juggling around and the pin had um, gone through. Reset. A yeah. Uh, so I had to wait like five minutes and I was just like, okay, I'll just follow this for five minutes and check my phone again. And I checked it and yeah, I'd gone the wrong way. So I turned around and um, yeah, I was pretty just like defeated and it was like kind of around then I was like, okay, I'm going to do this next little bit and then get to the next checkpoint and pull out. So um, yeah, by the time I got to the checkpoint, I couldn't even run. I was just walking. So um, yeah, I wasn't too disappointed to pull out. I think that, yeah, my headspace just wasn't there and yeah. Um, yeah, my fitness wasn't what it was. So, yeah, plenty of excuses and um, <laughs> they, they all got to me. But, yeah, that's what I happened, think, I guess. I think a bit, you're a bit hard on yourself, Tom. Yeah. I <laughs> Potentially. It, it was like the day before it was a bit stressful as well. Um, more like rushing around trying to buy all the stuff and Turbo was meant to come up and pace me. Uh, and yeah. um, his flight got cancelled at like 1 p.m. So I was like, oh, shit, like... I thought that you needed to have a pacer and um, I was like, oh, like fire out. Like I need to find someone else to pace me for the, the last bit. Um, so there was all like a little bit of stress for that, but I ended up calling the um, race organizer and she was like, oh, no, no, that's fine. Like you don't need a, a pacer. Um, so yeah, there was that as well, which was just like, I don't know, not, not great. Um, but yeah, I think it was just mostly mindset and I don't know, just if people telling you like, you can't do something it's hard to uh push those opinions away and, and stick to it sometimes so yeah that's mm. how it all went down yeah and um plans for 
future races? Yeah, I don't know. Um, it's like I would like to do a marathon, but um, I thought it was going to be an announcement. Hey, <laughs> thought you were going to announce. Oh, uh, I don't know. I'm gonna... still like up in the air. I like um, okay. It's just like could be Sydney, could be Melbourne, but I don't know. It's like not that much time. I kind of just want to get fit. Um, I've, I've definitely signed up for a UTA 100 at the end of October, so um, there's probably enough time to train for that. But to do a marathon, a short little marathon block in between, I don't know if it's a good idea. Should probably just um, focus on this one race. I don't know. I've been tossing and turning and changing my mind a lot, though. But, um, yeah, well, I don't know. I hear Melbourne's a good marathon to do, Dom. <laughs> yeah. No. No selfish intentions on my part, but anyway. <laughs> um, what about okay. you, Steve? How's your Me, it's going. Um, it's going good. It's it's sort of. I took after the half marathon. I kind of took a bit of time off. I had like th- I think it was three or four days where I didn't really didn't really do anything at all, which was kind of a good good reset. I think I've been doing sessions mileage hasn't been crazy but i've been doing sessions consistently and been training consistently for races for a while so it was good to sort of just you know hit the reset button a lip a little bit but you know after three or four days you get a little bit like you're not in your routine sort of thing mm-hmm. if that makes sense and um i kind of prefer to be training but i feel like my body needed it but i like i was doing starting to do things like, you know, eat more, eat more chocolate and just, mm. just let go a little bit in those four days. Cause you have that mentality of like, let's just relax for a bit. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then, yeah. And I had, I hadn't actually followed my, I hope Sally's not listening, but or well, she could see <laughs> training peaks. But anyway, I, I, I didn't follow like a few of the sessions and stuff like that. So I took one week where I just mentally shut off a little bit. Um, which I don't know if it's, I don't know how bad of a thing that is. Been pretty consistent with training, race, um, you know, leading into Gold Coast. So, but um, now this week is a little bit of a different one. I think we're doing, it's like power testing again to, to just get, um, get baseline power readings for a week. So we're going to do like on Monday, I did 10 second, 15 second, and 20 second max test, which is like all out sprinting. My, my, my legs are just, even though it wasn't much work, my legs are just really suffering. Um, cause I don't do that ever. Um, so, but it was interesting to do. Um, today I ran easy with Tobias, which was good just to get out for a bit of fun. And then tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow I've got a one minute max testing. Then Friday is five minute max testing. Then Sunday is nine minutes max testing. So I think I might do a little bit of a cheeky 3K time trial, which would be fun. Um, but yeah, so it's interesting to, as I said, already have a little bit of a reset, but then next week, hopefully get into the beginning of what will be a mar- sort of marathon training. Um, especially after seeing everyone like obviously you Alex do the marathon it's very it's like it's such a special event so I'm keen to uh, keen to train and and um yeah it was such a I'm, I'm sure we'll touch on this but even the half marathon to then the like watching the marathon the next day it's a different feeling I'm not sure about you guys but it's just like yeah completely different it just I got the sense that it means a lot more to people mm. Um, I mean, I'm not sure if, I'm not sure if that's because so much more goes into training or it's just, it hurts so much more. There's, there's a few different things. What do you reckon about that, Alex? Do you, do you get that similar feeling with the marathon? Yeah, it's, it's a unique event. Um, I think that the, the distance, well, firstly, you know, just to you, I guess what you would call joggers, you know, everyday runners, I think the distance is a huge accomplishment and as a matter of fact, it's a huge accomplishment no matter who you are. Um, yeah. But I think, you know, getting one done, um, even if it is just, you know, one for the first time is means a lot to people. And I think that contributes a lot to how those race days feel. And then 
I think you touched on some of the elements of preparing for and executing a marathon, um, which make it really special. And I was having a bit of a discussion with a couple of the, the Delta folk around this actually a little, you know, last yeah. week. And that was, um, you, you know, it was around, I guess, the concept of you have to be well prepared, you have to execute well, and, and you have to get lucky um, to have a really good mm. marathon. All those things need to be in there. Um, and yes. you can't really do it without any of those elements coming together. Um, and, you know, you can have, you can prep, prep really well, you can run to a great plan um, and it can still all go to pieces. Um, but, yeah. you, you know, you, you can't get lucky off rubbish training. <laughs> um, so, you Absolutely. know, you, you've got to have it all, put yourself in a position, I guess, to, to create your own luck. And I think that's why, um, you know, knocking one off, which goes according to plan, feels really special and, and that, you know, contributes to that feeling around the finish line and, and the whole buzz around the day because I think everyone yeah. knows how much goes into it and, and they're really keen to support you right along the way you know, the whole length of uh, 42 and a bit K. Yeah, it is a, it is a long way. And when, um, when I was there, I was there with my mum and my auntie and they hadn't been to any, like no running events at all. And they went to the marathon and just couldn't believe like how special it was. They stayed, they were in the stand and they stayed till like um, the six hour point essentially. <laughs> uh, because, well, that's main, one, one reason is because, um, my auntie had a friend who was doing the marathon and she actually sort of hurt, hurt herself um, a little bit and just made the cutoff. But I wasn't there for the whole time. I was there to watch obviously all the Delta athletes come through and just, we were waiting at the um, 32 K point. We saw you guys. And then the 40, 40 K point we saw you <laughs> and yeah, bit of a cheer squad. It was, yeah, it was so much fun. Um, you were still looking smooth, even 40 Ks. For, well, it was 40, 41 Ks. 41 was it? K, yeah. I yeah, remember, yeah. I remember it well. Um. I, yeah. <laughs> well, you, yeah. What, it, although you were looking smooth, how are you, <laughs> how are you feeling at that point? Oh, it's just, that's just deep, deep in the pain cave at that point. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, look, I mean, I think by that stage, you just, 41 Ks, you sort of, I think that was the first time pretty much I thought, all right, I accept that I'm going to make it home here um, yep. and sort of look down at the watch and probably the first time I started to get excited thinking, oh, you know, this this could be on and um, just just turning the legs over. Um, yeah, at that stage, that's all you're thinking. Just get down this buddy straight, which is, you know, yeah. sort of the kilometre stretch in front of you. Um, but fortunately, by that stage, sort of the, the crowd is starting to thicken and um, you get support the right the way down, but it was so good to see, you know, a couple of people you know at 41k. Um, I was, you know, starting to to feel a little bit of emotion rising up in me, and how that manifested, sort of, you know, a few different ways over the next 1200 <laughs> meters. But um, yeah, you know, that's by that stage you're really just kind of yeah, gritting your teeth, what you know, properly and, and truly. Yeah, who got the photo of you like doing a fist pump? Coming around the corner. That was actually my mum. Uh, ah, wow. So, um, yeah, that's a, that's what, you know, as I came around that corner, I sort of knew they'd be somewhere in there and, um, you know, just looked up and I think just, yeah, a little, little bit of that emotion overflowing, um, you know, yeah. only a couple of hundred metres to go there. You know, you've done it and um, I, was, I was pretty pumped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Were you, because um, obviously to... 228.53, how how much were you, like were you sort of looking at the watch and pacing quite accurately until right until the end? Um, I mean, um, we're super lucky. Um, I mean, we were going in, I knew that, um, sorry, so as I guess as a seated runner, they, they send you through all of the, the technical race briefing stuff and uh, we yep. knew that one of the, the women's groups was going at 228 pace. So um, they were going to lead um, with um, Lisa and um, Flanagan at 224. And, and then the yep. second pace um, for two of the Japanese athletes and, um, you know, Steph Bruce was in there as well, but she was sort of running between pace groups. Um, so sorry, that second pace, it was at 228. And I think that sort of made the decision for me. I thought, you know, yep. like, so we had um, Dion and um, Finocario and... Um, uh, Westcott on the front and yeah, 
just thought, you know, here are two seasoned elite athletes. Um, they're going to pace it as well as I will, um, and it just stops you worrying. So, um, yeah. yeah, decided that I was going to be on that 228 bus, and, you know, they took us through halfway perfectly, and Dion ran to 32Ks, a, a couple, you know, a couple K further, um, and, yeah, it was, it was just brilliant. And sort of once they dropped us off at about 32K, pretty much coming back past the finish line, then it was just a, a matter of managing that last 10. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, I might. I think I might circle back to the race. I think I might have gotten ahead of myself, especially deviating from my training week and then going to that. But anyway, um, <laughs> so last time we spoke to you, we talked obviously a lot about a lot about training. Um, I guess how did you, in terms of structure for training, how how have you structured this block compared to? to previous training blocks for the half marathon. Cause I noticed, um, very obviously when like speaking to some of the Delta runners, Chris and Arthur noticed or well, everyone pretty much noticed how consistent the training was. Um, so yeah. How did you sort of structure it? Yeah, I think, um, I'm glad to hear that feedback from them. So you can thank well, everyone, everyone said like, if anyone prepared well for this, it's Alex. So that's the feedback I got. <laughs> I'm glad. Um, look, uh, consistency was the, was really the main theme that I wanted to, I wanted to have that characterize my build up to this race. So, um, you know, I knew that, that prior to it, um, you know, there was a couple of other events that I did want to pick off. So, uh, you know, we had the half um, down in Canberra. I know we were speaking about that a little bit last time I was on, and, and I had an absolute sh- yep. shocker uh, um, down there. So, that's, uh, that's do, you want, do you want to talk about that? Or prefer not, not to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I think I think that was one of those days that just um, I, I didn't feel great. Sort of from the day before, um, right up until the start of the race, like at no stage felt good, and you know, yeah. and, and found out it's just one of those things subsequently goes wrong. Who knows whether anything was, I wasn't feeling fantastic, but sort of never, yep. nothing ever really materialized, but it's just, you know, sometimes I don't go right. And I think to my point before, you got to get lucky to a certain extent, even if you have prepped pretty well. Um, yep. And then we had the Sydney 10. Um, so I knew that there was a couple of things in there, which I wanted to run. Um, but then so after the Sydney 10, I knew I sort of had six weeks Um uh, plus, plus your taper um, to really just dial in a really consistent marathon block. And so I designed those six weeks with a bit of extra mileage. Um, uh, so I was up to first time, I was up to 150K a week. And um, that's the first time I'd sort of run that mileage a- and consistently, but I- I've never been up there as it was. Um, and yeah, weeks were really simple. Uh, I mean, I can breeze through one if you like. Yeah, um, that'll be great. Yeah. Just went, uh, so I went Monday morning, sort of easy 30 minutes. Um, and then I would, to be, and then I'd recovery double on a Monday, and but both super easy. So about 50 minutes in the evening. Um, yep. Then Tuesday main session, usually track session. Um, and we might touch on what some of those are, um, but, you know, they varied, but sort of main marathon focus session for the week and, and typically still at Gore Hill, but it did vary a little bit. Uh, Wednesday, I'd run our famous dry cleaners loop, um, typically um, morning and night, but either way, a, a decent double that day. Um, Thursday, usually a longer, easy run, I guess, where you might put your sort of mid-long run. Um, but it wasn't always maybe as long as you would characterize as that, but tended to be a, another single and long. Um, and then either Friday or Saturday, I'd fit in that secondary workout probably pending on what the plans for the long run were on the Sunday. So if I'm doing you know, a major session or a session included in the long run on the Sunday, then I'd probably do a bit less and do it on the Friday. Um, and whichever day I sort of wasn't doing a lot. Um, or I, I sort of fit three runs into Saturday, Sunday, uh, Friday, Saturday rather. Um, so yeah. I do a session in there and a double one um, on one of the days. Uh, and then, yeah, Sunday long run. So tended to be... 10 runs, um, three double days, sometimes four, just depending on what you need to squeeze in, I guess what the nature of some of the other runs were, but r- really basic structures and, um, yeah, two workouts and a long run. And sometimes I guess a long run with a workout, um, built into it. Yeah. Um, going up to, cause I did note down, it looks like you did about six, five or six weeks of 
150k weeks yeah. was that just because you know you're doing a marathon like did you always plan to go up to that sort of mileage yeah yeah uh i knew so prepping for this race last year which we all know um got cancelled uh, because <laughs> yeah. of covid um i was sort of up around 130 130 and a bit and i knew that I could probably push the envelope a little bit further and particularly with another year of mileage under my belt. So um, decided that 150 was about the mark. And also it sort of, I mean, I, I could have sort of gone either side of that to a certain extent, but it just, it sort of seemed to be what turned out with those sorts of, with that week that I chatted to you about um, around about where that sort of week fell. And because yep. it fell around that, I, I thought 150, all right, that's, it's a good thing. You know, it's a good number to target. Um, and so, yeah, plan to get about there and, and, Whatever that number was, um, you know, just plan to stick there for yeah, like you say, five or six weeks in the in the build up. Yeah. Um, one one question I had is more even p- personally when I'm going to head into this sort of marathon training. Obviously, you've got a full on sort of schedule, um, um, and you're doing doubles and running 150k weeks. Like I find that it's difficult for me to get out for the second one, especially with the wear and yeah. tear of of the day starting to kick in how did do you have any do you have any tips on yeah. um on getting through that especially because you yeah. i mean with your in your work as well it's not like you work um standard hours i would imagine so how do you how do you get through that yeah um look i mean work yeah it does get in the way um and that's why i try and do the bulk of my stuff in the morning um but um i, I just um, I don't know how many people this will help, but I just gave myself no choice. Um, sometimes yeah. I took my stuff to work. Um, that did help. If I knew yeah. what sort of day I'd be having um, or I knew that I was going to be working sort of late because there was a lot of my plate, sometimes taking your stuff to work and then you can go and get your run in at 5 o'clock. You know, you double, yeah. go for 40 minutes. You know, Maybe it's an hour and a bit with a shower on each side, whatever you needed to do. And you can go back to work and still be at the office. And I mean, people are pretty pretty accepting these days um, of, you know, the fact that other people are off doing other things and lucky enough that um, my girlfriend doesn't seem to mind too much and um, you know, <laughs> we don't have any kids or anything to worry about. So um, it's nice to, to be able to go and do that. But on the days when you get back and, and towards, or particularly in those 150K weeks, like you say, it was cold, it was dark, it was pissing yeah. rain again for the entire time, um, getting back when it's sort of a handful of degrees and going out in the wet, um, did suck at times but most of the time i think you just you know you get 200 meters into it and you sort of enjoy yourself um it's just mm. literally about getting out the door so yeah i just tried not to think about it to try and make the turnaround at home as quick as possible sort of in the door say hello to georgie say sorry i'm going again and <laughs> just um let's get out in the cold uh, what i would say though is also maybe the most practical thing i could say is get some decent gear um like mm. you know honestly putting on a decent pair of gloves and a sort of like a i have this um north face hat which is like polar fleece with a cap and um you know just it's not a beanie so it doesn't get ridiculously hot when you're running but it just keeps your head a bit warmer so between that throwing some gloves on you know sometimes a, a decent jack if it's raining it's just not quite doesn't suck as much just to walk out the door um you know it sort of gets you into the run and then from there you can manage it yeah oh, that's good what do you what do you reckon dom how do you how do you battle well because you you went through a phase of doing quite um quite a lot of doubles and obviously and you do quite a bit of training in the afternoon as well so i just find um yeah you just got to get it done that's my answer yeah, <laughs> yeah. um but yeah how do you find that dom i don't know sometimes like running the commute is good like you like alex was saying just don't leave yourself an option you have to get home um so unless you're going to get like an uber or something which um you would i don't know you'd have to have a a serious think about getting an uber if um, you're going to so yeah you just don't have an option yeah Um, i find that's a a good way to do it but uh yeah i think just you got to have that mentality that you're going to get it done yeah i think the what alex mentioned I had this battle on Sunday when it was pouring. I was I actually did get out, uh, and it's it's it kind of haunts you. I find 
like it just it's um yeah you choose the the comfortable the comfortable way and then like it's great and then you're just thinking about it for the next day or so so it's almost like um but you are you are right alex when you when you get out the door even if it's miserable you start to enjoy it um but it's hard to convince yourself when you're sort of cold yeah and can put a jumper on but 100 percent and the only uh, the last thing i'd say is it's you probably got the luxury of it sometimes when you're in a marathon block and if there's other people prepping for the same marathon you know they're up for a couple of miserable efforts as well so (laughs) you can uh, (laughs) you can find someone to go with i think that's pretty stock standard advice but um a couple of the guys you know based pretty close to me would yeah, it's hard. Okay, I'll meet you on this corner in however long and get out there and whinge together. It's a good way to do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a good that's a good way to do it as well. I'm trying to convince Tobias to do uh, Melbourne. <laughs> he <laughs> he hasn't come around. <laughs> I actually mentioned it like literally straight after the race. I was chatting to him. I was like, <laughs> "Do you want to do Melbourne?" He's like. Mate, I just finished a marathon. <laughs> he didn't say that, but he gave me that look. But anyway, um, um, what were what were some of your? If we can go into the sessions, what were some of your key sessions? I saw, I saw one, but I'll I'll let you sort of um, play <laughs> out how yeah how you how you scheduled those. Let me talk through some of them. <clears throat> um, I mean, I'm trying to decide. I'm, I'm just. Kidding. Go back and have a look at some of this stuff, mate. Uh, I guess I'll try and decide whether or not um, the the key ones are, are better or building into the key ones. So I guess the the, absolute, the main one I did, um, which was the biggest session, and I did this prior to last year as well, um, was five by five k off a one k float. Um, mm-hmm. So that was um, look, it's a it's a really solid session. Um, Lucky Oaks uh, got me to do that last oh, yeah. year when we first prepped. Um, and so I wanted to do it again. I found it, um, really just a really good confidence boosting session actually last year. Um, cause I think if you're, you know, if you're generally prepped well enough, five by five K at marathon pace, or sorry, five K at marathon pace should be okay. You know, pretty manageable stuff. Um, yeah. and then once you get into a bit of rhythm, you can sort of just tick those five Ks off. Um, and so then, but then when you get to the other end of it, yeah, all right they're tough towards the end, but you get to the other end, you think, blimey, I've just done 25K at marathon pace. I've only done it off a 1K float. So I've done 30K at relatively mm. close to Mara effort overall. Um, a bit of a warm up, bit of a cool down. So, you know, both the times I've done it, it's been 36K and you go, that was like, you know, that was all right. You know, it's not a marathon, but it just gives you some confidence. Um, mm. The one that I did this year was, I probably wasn't ideal actually. So I was out... Um, a long weekend is out with some friends um, towards Tamworth and staying at their place and sort of thinking, oh, where am I going to run this thing? Um, and anyway, they um, just friend of mine, Till, kindly took us out to some pretty quiet roads uh, and just sort of mapped out a two and a half K out and back. Um, yep. But it was, it was uphill and into the wind on the way out. Um, and so <laughs> I sort of got, I guess I got off the back of the session and the, you know, the out, parts were uh were probably a bit too hard and i was working too hard and then on the way back it was probably getting too much assistance so um it wasn't the exact session i would have liked it to be but nevertheless it's you know it's good quality work Mm. um aside from that i think you know the the key sessions probably are um you know some of those just big tempo efforts and and you know, various other things, which you can sometimes work in the long run. Sometimes you do them standalone. Um, I did a fair few efforts down uh, a Chowder Bay, um, which is close to us here, which is just sort of undulating um, and, and run a lot of that to marathon effort rather than speed. Um, because, you know, when you're on sort of tougher terrain, etc., cetera, it, yeah, it, it is harder. Um, so, it's, you know, there's no point blowing yourself up trying to run in my case, three and a half minute Ks when you know that, you know, that's, that's harder than marathon effort. So you want to try and get that feeling, I think, um, yeah. and, and just run to effort. Um, yeah. And then a range of others, I ran a, a 10 by a mile sort of track session, um, 10 by 10 by a mile off. Jeez. Or I'm trying to think whether it was 60 or 90 seconds. Um, 
let me just see. I might be able to have a look. 10 bar mile off 60 seconds. Um, so 10 bar mile, half marathon pace off 60 seconds. Oh, yeah. That was a good sesh. That's um, solid. Yeah, solid as, as well. Um, so, yeah, just trying to get into, I guess, meaty work um, where you don't give yourself a whole lot of recovery, um, but you try and get into those zones where I think you sort of stabilize your heart rate and get yourself working at a consistent effort level um because for me you know the marathon well it's not just for me it's <laughs> it's for everyone um it's you know it's about your aerobic capacity it's sort of trying to you know build that huge engine um that's what's going to serve you really well yes doing quicker work is going to help make a marathon pace feel easier and you should definitely keep doing your strides and you should build in some sort of more up tempo sessions um, when they fit but the key stuff i think is that really is that really chunky stuff um one last session which I didn't do this year, but which I did last year, and, and I would recommend as well is um, I saw Brett and Jack do it, so I thought I might try to go. <laughs> uh, um, was um, so twenty k ten by sort of k on k float or, or not a float, almost k on k off if you like, just either side of marathon pace. So going like dipping under and then coming over. So I guess it is, it's like on and then a bit of a float and then you pretty much average out at marathon pace. So maybe you do, you know, if I use three and a half as an example, you go three twenties for a K, three forties, twenties, forties, and you just run that 20 K straight through, um, try and recover a bit in the floats and obviously push the others a little bit harder. Um, that was really good as well. Did that um, previous year, um, which yeah, I thought was, was a good one. Yeah. Um, are you still doing, are you still scheduling everything yourself as well? I am. Yeah. Um, that's pretty wild. Um, how, like, are you, did you, are you getting different, um, your training from different sources or have you read any different resources or c compared to the last block or are you just, yeah. How, how's that work? Um, yeah, I guess just, keep trying to build the, my knowledge as a whole, really. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, look at what other people are doing and, and see workouts go up. And I do enjoy, sit, you know, following good athletes and see the sort of stuff they're doing. And, you know, obviously if you can't hit the paces, then you can just take some of the structures um, and try and apply those. I was pretty lucky. Um, Jack Green, um, who, who you boys will know, um, his old man and, and a few members of his family were very, very good marathoners. So um, they sort of um, threw a few suggested long runs our way uh, um, and, and other bits and pieces to, to employ. And um, look, I'd be lying if I said I, I didn't nick a couple of long run workouts um, off the run crew <laughs> programs from, from Benny Saint because he was programming Jack. And as I said before, it's good to jump in with people and, and do stuff together. So, you know, if there was something key he was doing, I'd say, oh, you know, I'll just come do it with you. And I guess, you know, not so much program it, but I'd, I'd just go and run whatever he was running. So, um yeah, and that was mainly like long run with, you know, chunk of tempo or something like that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because I know they're just from talking to some of the athletes, I think if they're not doing the marathon, the long run is a bit take it easy sort of scenario. So there's not much yeah. work that goes in. Yeah, and, and look, the marathon, um, you know, the marathon longies aren't, it's not like you've got to do a workout in them every week. Um, a lot of it is still just about having time on feet, but um, as you're getting close and just trying to fit, I guess, a, maybe a little bit more volume uh, at quality um, into your week, it's a, it's a good way to do it. And it's just kind of a nice way to simulate some more of that fatigue. Um, I think that you're getting your legs towards the end of a long run because I think that familiarity is something which is really, really valuable. And um, no matter how familiar, in inverted commas, you are, uh, <laughs> trust me, you know, you're never familiar enough at it. Um, or, or maybe you are because the, the way that your legs feel from sort of 37 K or at least the way mine did, um, you, you can't really, you can't simulate that. Um, cause if you, did yeah. if you did simulate it, you'd take weeks to recover every time you did it in your training block. So, you know, it's just about getting as much, I think, fatigue in your legs in some ways, um, and continuing to keep that as, at a sustainable level to prepare you as best as you can for those sort of last five Ks in the Mara because um, it, it's just attritious. <laughs> it's, it's, um, yeah, it's a bit wild, those last, um, from what I remember. And we're going to voluntarily um, do that again, but it's funny. 
even talking to Tobias, he's like, not sure how much I enjoyed that. <laughs> like during and i was Fair like yeah comment. i'm not sure i'm not sure how much i like as in obviously just um touching on how painful it is but you kind of just look back on it positively obviously it's one of those yeah. things but um um do you like the longer the longer training like the longer stuff or yeah i do um i think yeah i, I mean i I think you can enjoy any session and you probably, you probably said it, they were all a bit sick. So um, it doesn't, <laughs> you know, any of that stuff is sort of can be pretty appealing, but I, I do enjoy the longer stuff. Um, so I think getting into a bit of a rhythm, um, there's a really good loop near us. I would have talked about it before, Ball's Head, um, getting on that, just rolling hills, sort of 40, 50 minute sessions um, on the hills. Um, that sort of stuff is, is so good for you. And just, if you can do it with someone, you know, if you can do it with yourself, it, it's great confidence um, just to kind of to rip into. And when, if you do it with someone else as well, it's like they're just, I don't know, it's kind of enjoyable being in someone's company for that long and uh, ideally someone you like. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, uh, but being in someone's company for that long, sort of getting you stuck into it together, um, I, you know, I really enjoy that side of it. So, you know, the long longer workouts offer you those opportunities and, you know, I was super lucky to have um, a bunch of guys, um, you know, like I mentioned, Jack, Ryan Fisher, um, Sam Hopper, um, you know, a couple of other, you know, local guys around. Um, we're all attacking the marathon. Um, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Mm. Yeah, definitely. I think that's why selfishly I'm trying to get Dom to <laughs> do another marathon. <laughs> <laughs> with me so we, but yeah go on Dom sorry well I think the training will be pretty similar regardless like um yeah I'm pretty keen to just sort of really knuckle down and, and focus on some solid sort of longer stuff so yeah I'm sure we'll be running plenty together soon okay that's good that's good um um yeah so I guess we've covered off um a lot of the different sessions what do you have like a do you have a favorite session at all or not anything that sticks mm. out favorite session um it's a good question the um balls head hilly tempo um which i said mentioned before that's that's a good one um sort of a good mix of hills um <clears throat> it's about a 2.6 2.7 k loop um yep. and so it's I mean, depending on what speed you're running it, um, I tended to dial in about 10 minute loops on that. Um, and then just sort of built the reps up. Um, so, you know, doing, started off sort of doing two or three laps, um, and into four. And then finally, I think I did once, um, ran five. Um, that was, that is good. And I just think, you know, it's not glamorous, um, but it just gets you really strong. Um, and, yeah, it's a good it's a good grind and it's not complicated. You don't have to think about anything except pressing lap on your watch once when you go through the start point if that's how you you know, if, if you want to know your split times. Um, yeah. Yeah, otherwise I mean I think traditionally, um, I, I might have even said this before, I think my favorite workout um, just generally is broken miles. I still love them. Mm. I didn't I don't don't think I did them as part of this prep actually, but um, yeah, broken miles really good. Um, so, I mean, the way that we run them or the way that they've been introduced to me, um, by Jerome is K on 300 float, 300 hard. Um, yeah, and yeah they're good fun. Mm, yeah. No, good stuff. Um, maybe it'd be good to start talking about the race, Dom. Do you have any, do you have any questions about training? Yeah. Um, I was just thinking, uh, like stuff outside of running, do you do, um, have you introduced any sort of weight training or, um, any other sort of cross training or anything on top of what you're doing? Yeah, look, uh, I probably didn't do enough, um, but I think most of us would probably say that. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's always sort of those things you can do more. Of the, I mean, I guess the way I tend to look at it is the weight training is probably, it's probably more than a one percenter, but I sort of look at it like a one percenter. Um, I think if you're doing enough to keep yourself healthy. And I mean that in a sort of an all encompassing stretching, rolling, 
um, you know, doing the thing, just, just treating yourself with enough respect, enough recovery time. Um, then that, the weight stuff, you, you do get a lot out of just running big mileage, I think, from a strength perspective. That's not to say it substitutes for, for doing the additional work, um, but most of the additional work I was doing is sort of like, you know, resistance band based. I've got a couple of kettlebells at home, um, just doing simple things when I could fit it in. Um, mm. And so I sort of look at it as, sort of, I guess, topping off my training um, because, you know, you are getting a big load in. Um, I think as long as you're sort of rolling out and doing a few bits and pieces, just when you can do those, when you get the extra moments, don't get me wrong, do the extra work. Um, you know, session afternoons is usually the time I'll do it. So, you know, session in the morning, then I do, do the strength that evening to keep it a hard day. Um, and I know we spoke last time about keeping it easy days easy and big exponent of that. Um, so not trying to cross over sort of too much cross training on your easy jogging days because you should be trying to recover. Um, so yeah, bits and pieces, mate. I guess I speckled it through, but um, you know, no doubt there's room for improvement. So uh, you know, it'll be it'll get it'll get a bit tougher now to squeeze more and more or shave more and more time off. So um, those are little things I guess you turn to. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, <clears throat> so you were already talking about the uh, oh the, the race. race. Then I did have a thought. I actually did have a thought before we get into the race, <laughs> which was. Um, how much did the goal of running sub two thirty play into training and into your into your mind? Do you, do you think about that a lot, or? Um... Um, yeah, I guess I guess it gave me a good mark to to baseline my work off. Um, I knew I was working towards it, but I think you know I've heard this said a bit, and and, and I you know. I believe in it. I think you've got to train for where you're at at the time. Um, I think I was pretty confident that that was where I should, I could be, you know, mm -hmm. sub 230 when I reached the marathon. But, you know, when you're six weeks out and you're yet to sort of go through that high mileage stuff, <clears throat> you sort of know that, yeah, okay, you still got a bit of work to get there. So, you know, if sessions are a bit tougher or your pace is a bit down or, or whatever it needs to be, then, you know, that's not the end of the world. But um, I did use it as a bit of a benchmark, I guess. Um, and I was pretty confident that I would be around about. Um, and look, to a certain extent, that's that's based off, you know, knowing what I'd run in other events um, yeah. and how that should, in inverted commas, translate into a marathon time. Um, that's, not a, that's not a simple or, you know, easy thing to do, I guess, but uh, I guess if you know that you're preparing for a marathon in a training sense, then your other runs should be an indication. Um, but just cause you can run, you know, 31 and a bit or, or whatever it is in the, in the 10 K, if you don't put the work in, it doesn't mean you can run the Mara. Um, so it's just yeah. a, a way to guide yourself, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. There's, um, um, I don't know. There's normally a lot of, there can sometimes be a lot of emotional weight to the goal. Mm. Um, which can, I don't know, maybe that's what could be good or bad in a sense. Like mm. if, at an identity level, for example, you get too concerned. How, yeah, how do you view that? Because I've, I've um, to your point, before I've sort of trained, I would say in my previous marathon before I got a coach and stuff like that, just going from running a certain marathon time, then just automatically thinking that I can just skip to, all right, now the next goal is 2.30. But not respecting that that's a i've now learned such a different level um to, for example going from 230 237 to 230 is massive um mm. so not respecting that and then also getting attached to running a certain goal if that makes sense yeah um uh, i think people do do that um and it's sort of a i think it's a bit of a trap um because you know as I think you summed it up there, you know, from an identity perspective, it can be challenging for people. And, um, yeah. you know, I probably, uh, someone asked me afterwards, they sort of thought, you know, how, had you told people you're going for 2.30? And so I said, yeah, well, I actually I told absolutely everyone, um, <laughs> you know, because I, whether that was a good idea or a bad idea, it was a, it was a really public thing that I wanted to achieve. And um, one of my very good friends um, now, Moya, she said to me after, she was like, yeah, I remember actually when you first told me that. It was a fair while ago now. Um, and she was kind of like, well, all right, yeah, I guess, uh, <laughs> I guess you back yourself, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, I think, I think it's about being realistic. And 
we spoke about the marathon that got called off 12 months ago. Um, you know, I was having a chat to Lockie at the time, Lockie Oaks and a couple of the other guys who were going to try and run sub 230 that year. And I thought, oh, I'm probably not there. Um, it would yeah. have been tempting, but I don't think, and I mean, question without an answer. We'll never know how I would have run last year, but I wasn't in as good a shape as this year. And, and I don't think I would have got there. So, you know, I think I would have gone out sort of probably trying to run, you know, two, 232, 234 pace or something and, and seen, seen how it went. I think I was going to go 232 pace, to be honest. Um, you know, it's a, and you just said it there before, um, Smitty, it's not, you know, that's different to going out at 228 pace. Like, yeah. you know, those those little marginal gains are, are hard to come by. And I think you just have to be honest with yourself because um, otherwise, yeah, it's a long way and you, you end up a smoldering wreck. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that's a good, it's a good lesson to learn, I guess, early on if you can. Um, I've certainly made that mistake and especially in talking to my coach just, having that realistic time frame, and you can always think um i've tried to at least think sort of longer term what can i achieve in the sport in five years for example which is it's which is harder to get your head around but um with the consistency that obviously you've displayed you can go a lot you can just go so much farther and maybe it's good to detach from emotionally from you know um the goal if that makes sense I think that's well said, mate. Hundred uh, percent. I think you got to look long term. The reality is, it's a long term sport. Yeah. Um, you know, you get your value out of months, and but but more than that, years of training. You know, you don't get it out of weeks. Um, yeah. So, I think that's a hundred percent right. And you know, you look back on a career again, inverted commas, your career. You know, whoever you are in however long, ten years, five years, ten years, it, it doesn't matter whether you run. You know, your PB this year or next or the one after that. Um, yeah, you, know, you still got the quickest time to your name, and um, you know the fact that someone smokes you up by a couple of minutes this year, and then subsequently they're nowhere to be seen. Um, <laughs> yeah, and like you say, I think the emotional side of things can can be troublesome. Yeah. Well, what about you, Dom? Has your view on goals? I think we've talked about this in the past, but has how's your view changed on goals over time? Would you say? Yeah, I think. Um... Like I, I can often sort of just set big goals and um, try to go after them. Like I, I, I like blatantly sort of trained for sub two thirty, um, and I've come up short twice now running two thirty two two times. But um, yeah, I'm not like disappointed or anything in those efforts. And I think that um, if you go about it in the right way, it can inspire you. But um, I guess I don't know. It can sort of um, mislead you and if you put too much weight on something and you you get it i feel like when you get your goal it's like almost even more mentally tough to keep going because you you just kind of like rest on your laurels and say like okay i'm this guy now like um i don't know i guess you just got to constantly be checking in with yourself and um yeah keep a good tab on where you're at and and what what the next sort of um inspiration and motivation is going to be for you but um hmm. i don't know yeah they're, they're they're good and they're bad but um yeah it's, it's all kind of just how you go about it and i think having that long-term um perspective is important definitely hmm. i remember don when we started when we did our first race well sorry when i did my first race training for um what was it sun run the 10k yeah. and i mean what we were training to break, I was training to break 45 in the 10 K and I got the same feeling as I do training for any other race. And it's sort of, yeah. I don't know. I had this, I had this perception that, you know, one day, well, with Dom and I have this saying, it's like, Oh, that'll be proper running when you run this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. Dom's like, oh, mate, that's all now proper podcasting or something <laughs> or proper edit. You just, um, I don't know. The, the goalposts just keep shifting. Um, yeah. And I, I have, I've had this perception that I've had this perception that basically um, that if you achieve the crazy goal, it'll be somehow different, but it's not, you kind of just, I find in my experience, at least you just sort of reset. Um, do, do you guys experience, you know, the same sort of thing or am I losing it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, you might be, but that's, you know, um, I think actually it's well said, mate. Like, you know, it's not that diff- it's not that different, is it? Um, you know, you yeah. renormalize um, the you know the things that you're doing week to week. Running 150k a week in this marathon prep, I just look at people running 100k a week and think you guys are absolute lunatics. Yeah, what, what are you yeah. doing? Um, <laughs> And, you know, you are running a bunch more than that and, you know, you think it's the most normal thing in the world. Um, you do, yeah, you just you just reset. And I think that's a good thing, though. You know, it's an, it's, it's an evolution. It should be a process. I remember a um, very short anecdote. I sat down with Jerome a few years ago now, sort of when I just yeah. joined Delta. And, and I was saying, you know, I was turning up to a couple of Delta sessions. These blokes were just absolutely donkey licking me. Like, you know... <laughs> I was miles off it um, and sort of I'd been there a few months and I sat down for a coffee or whatever and, you know, we tar- I think I was targeting, I don't know, whatever it was, 75 or something for the, the half. I just run sub sub 80 and speaking about how amazing it would be to run 72 for the half and, you know, if I could run sub 240 in a marathon, I think I could die happy. And then all of a sudden, you know, 12 months later and you're like, hang on a second. Uh, <laughs> So, yeah, you know, it definitely shifts. And I think if you maintain a healthy perspective on them and, you know, I think it was sort of, um, you know, hidden between the lines or something you said before, Luke, if, you know, if you don't, you make sure you don't beat yourself up too much um, you mm. know, or, or don't, you, you know, you run 232, okay, yeah, all right, well, you didn't run sub 230, but it's just two minutes, it's, it's piss all and um, it, it matters not for, you know, the type of person you are. Um, that's you know that's the most critical thing if you can maintain perspective across all of that. Mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think it's um, actually just reflecting back. What obviously that's one of the key things that keeps us running is just wanting to get to the next level. But also, um, would you say there's anything in particular in varying? Like one thing that helped me was varying my training. Um, helped, stopped it from becoming sort of monotonous. Has, um, is that a factor for you boys as well? Or, because obviously you've got to change. Well, I guess, I guess you sort of change as you go for a different goal, right? You, you sort of have to get your head around a different level of fitness. Like 230 training is probably very different to um, sub three training, for example. Um, yeah, so have you guys changed much or is there anything you can think of you've changed specifically over the years that's kept you motivated in a general sense? Uh, it's a, yeah, it's a good question. I think it's probably another it's probably another evolution is, is almost the answer. Again, I think for me, like you just start to view things differently. You know that it's going to take more, like you, you know where you're at. You know how mm. much it's going to take to, or, or you think you know how much it's going to take to shift the dial sort of X amount. Mm-hmm. And then you start working towards that. And, and as you do it, you get a better understanding of how it feels to work, you know, a, a bit harder and, and a bit harder again. And then, you know, how much is too much too soon? Obviously, I think we all go through that. Um, so, yeah, I think it's it's about just understanding. It, you know, it's another understanding piece where you're at, how much you think it's going to take, you know, how much improvement are you seeing based on the amount of work you're doing? Is it a consistency? It's all, you know, I think it's all about sort of changing the levers. Is it just a time thing? You know, I need to keep doing this for X amount of time and I'm going to consistently chip away, which in my opinion is a major part of it. Um, mm. You know, too much too soon tends not to work. But, yep. you know, then again, um, you know, I'm sure you reach a stage when you sort of like, well, I'm, I think I'm probably maximizing, you know, maybe my aggregate or, or my just your base of effort that you're putting in, you know, might, you might be putting a huge amount of time into your training uh, and you sort of plateaued and, and that probably, you know, hopefully for most people happens over a period of, let's call it years, but certainly months. And it's like, all right, maybe I'm not seeing quite the benefits or quite the escalation of performance that I was. Then it's like, right, what other levers have you got, you know, to, to tinker mm. with, to see what sort of, you know, you change your stimulus, see what sort of different results you can get. But, I think it's important to sort of change those one at a time. You know, people, do, you know, a lot of time you get stuck in and, you, you know, you smash your workouts and your volume's up and you're throwing in speed work and you're doing strength and, and you want to race and it's like, 
you know, no, no worries. Um, but most of the time, it's not going to turn out that well um, in the medium to long term. So, you know, I think um, sort of finding that equilibrium and big believer in the fact that it should match your life. And, you know, if you're happy in a general sense, then training is yeah. going to go better and, and then you can start tinkering. Yeah, no, that's a great, that's a great answer. And it's, it's funny. It's something I found at least running is something you can't do unless you love it. Like you, there's no way you're going to train like that for a longer period of time, at least, and unless you um, sort of love it. But I, I can't remember if I asked you this last time, Alex, but do you see parallels in the discipline you have in training translate to professional life? Like, do you, do you see the connectedness of the two things? Yeah, I, I do. Um, I think it's a, I think there's sort of character traits there, um, which probably serve me well. Um, but equally there's character traits, which probably serve me poorly. <laughs> um, so, I, but I do think, you know, turning up and, and hooking in, um, I speak a bit, or when I say I speak a bit, when I chat to people, um, yeah. I'm certainly not presenting to anybody. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, I talk a lot about like the zero sum game, um, and I very much view life in that sense. And I think as much as the characteristics of sort of being disciplined with your running, yeah, might help you out in terms of what you're trying to achieve professionally or, or anywhere else for that matter, um, it's. I think it's a real balancing act in terms of how much you can put into any one or two or three things. Um, and so, you know, I've been really lucky over the last little while, you know, yes, I've got a job which I'm, you know, focused on and, and I want to do well at and it, it takes up a lot of my time and, and capacity in, a, you know, in the way that I think about it. Um, <clears throat> I've been lucky in the last little while. I've been in a good routine, um, I've been working on an engagement, which means you know, it's allowed me to train and, and I've been sort of comfortable and, and I haven't actively looked to change that because I know that I was investing a lot of time in my running and that was something else which was important to me. But you've got to be careful that, you know, you don't push all the throttles forward at the same time, I think, um, you know, much the same as we were just saying with training. Um, yeah. I, I think life is a zero-sum game like that and you've got to be careful. And as long as you're making conscious decisions about where you're investing your time and effort, then I think you tend to come out of the other side pretty well. So, you know, for me, it's been, all right, maybe I've got a performance year or something at work or I go, well, I'm going to work my ass off as a runner because I want to achieve X. Um, maybe that means that professionally, you know, I do a little bit less. Um, and then when you're sitting there, you don't necessarily have to say to your performance manager, well, you know, I wasn't much good this year. I wasn't much job. It's like, well, what I've done is, you know, I've slightly reprioritized and I recognize that my contribution is, you know, maybe not out, you know, as outstanding as it was otherwise. You know, it's still really solid. And I think you've got to, most people probably hold themselves to a minimum standard, which is probably, hopefully, still pretty good professionally. Mm. But, you know, if you can sit there and objectively say, I haven't given it, you know, as much as I otherwise may have, um, and you can be happy with being, you know, rated really well at work, but, you know, maybe not magnificent or something like that, um, then I think that serves you well, just sort of being honest with where you're at across all parts of your life. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the balancing act is a pretty difficult, I don't know, it's a pretty difficult thing to get right, I find, especially once you start running and then especially if you're doubling. So it's... um. There's no, there's no easy answer for, like, it's not a standard answer. I guess it's, it's different for everyone, um, but yeah. Okay. Well, moving on to the race, um, <laughs> the actual so I'm race. For the listeners, this is going for just as long as everything else. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was, I tend to waffle. What was um, your... I guess we've already touched on the pacing strategy, which was getting in the two um, two twenty eight sort of block. Um, what was your what was your nutrition strategy? Yeah, um, nutrition strategy. First time I have um, properly carb loaded. So um, <clears throat> did did a bit of research. Another good podcast um, called The Long Munch. I think it's called. Oh yeah. Um, which is, oh, I better just double check that I've got that right. Anyway, it's nutritionists. Yeah. Um, He's like Alan and, McCubbin and, um, or oh, what's the girl's name? 
I forget her name, but I should remember because she's very good. She's very good, yeah. Uh, anyhow, well, you, you, you do that research for me. Um, <laughs> thanks, Tom, and I'll keep it. I took their um, carb loading protocol, and look, I think it's fairly standard carb loading protocol, but that was just where I first um, heard it, which was 10 grams of carbs per kilogram of body mass per 24 hours. Um, and I did that over a 48 hour loading period. So, um, was looking to get, um, sort of high sixties, um, weight. So I was looking to get towards 700 grams of carbs in both of those days. Um, so I tracked everything I had and, um, there's a lot of rice and various other bits and pieces consumed, but, um, yeah, so got that up and you can obviously sort of force a bit of that in with, um, you know, just straight sugars or carbs roll, you know, in water and stuff like that. Um, you know, you drink mixes, etc. And good tip that I got was actually just buying basically like straight sugar, so dextrose or um, something like that, and you can just tip it in your water. So I did a bit of that. Um, and then out on course, I had four drinks, um, which were placed at 10k, 20k, 30k, and 35k. Um, and I missed the first two because um, sure. I wasn't I wasn't looking carefully enough, or I didn't know exactly where they were going to be. Despite the fact that I did, uh, I had I was half a table out, so um, but that, that was okay. Uh, I gave myself, myself a bit of wiggle room, so I had four drinks and I had four gels on me as well. Okay. Uh, so I think um, another part of that, that carb protocol was um, sort of you, can, you max out at about absorbing sixty grams of carbs per hour. Um, so over the two and a half hours, um, you know, being fully carved already um, over those previous two days a few carbs in the morning um, just to top up sort of your glycogen stores um, in your liver um, which can which can hold them um, hold it as well so you restock that and then head into your race and if you're maximizing sort of if you've got at least 60 carbs in your gut um, then you're going to be absorbing as much as you can so mm. um, <clears throat> and how were your how are your sort of energy levels throughout throughout the race um, in terms of the you know the ups and downs that we talk about? How did you go in a general sense um, yeah. in terms of your fueling? Yeah, fueling went well, mate. Um, I was I was really pleased with it. Um, yeah, didn't didn't suffer too much um, from a fueling perspective. Um, yeah, I mean the way I yeah, so no issues there. Uh, I don't think um, guts were fine. Um, yep. Did, didn't have to go to the loo um and you know certainly you always see unfortunately there's a bit of carnage out there <laughs> there always carnage. is they were they will remain nameless but um good on them for <laughs> staying out on the course um yeah so all went fine um i mean my fatigue was was all um muscular sort of leg based load based um yep. you know, fatigue rather than the fueling stuff yeah okay um well that's good so no no dramas then. No, mate, touch wood. I, I hope it stays that way because, um, you know, it is a little bit lucky the draw. Some days go better than others, but um, I think yeah. some people seem to just have the absolute horrors with their guts. So um, hopefully it can sort of stick the way it is at the moment, yeah. Yeah. Um, Did you um, practice uh, taking on gels and, and drinks and stuff like that um, in the prep or was it more just, so there we go? <laughs> uh, no, I did practice. Um, probably not as much as I should have, um, but I just was more. Uh, I think it's probably advisable to do be a bit more structured than I was. <clears throat> Excuse me, in terms of like at least you know maybe once or twice practice taking on the volume that you're going to take on on race day. Um, for me, I, what I did was really just I just introduced nutrition into my longer workouts, but I sort of introduced it insofar like it was proportional to those workouts so i would fuel um you know in proportion with what i was doing rather than you know okay i'm not running a marathon but i'm going to take on marathon f level of yeah. fuel just to see if i can tolerate it um i think you know rightly or wrongly um having done a couple in the past and not having suffered too much from a fueling perspective i was sort of happy or at least i was confident and whether or not that was misplaced um that I wouldn't sort of, the load of it wouldn't be an issue. It's just more whether, you know, you're used to taking it on. Um, mm. So look, uh, touch wood, it panned out. Um, but I think I would probably advise people if they've never run a marrow or 
um, and it's their first one to have a few goes at least taking on um, quite a lot just to see sort of maybe where your tolerance ceiling is, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what was the, oh, gee, I can't remember. What was the shoe, shoe choice for the race? <laughs> Vaporfly, Vaporfly next to Scent 2s. Yeah. Okay. Was there much much thought that went into that or much, did you try uh, any different super shoes before? Yeah. So I've recently been running in the, the Metaspeed Skies, um, yep. which I really enjoy actually. They're a really good shoe. Um, they, they run at least half a size small. Um, so they're probably a touch small for me. And so I would, I just train in them um, and, yep. and have a, I won't race in them. Um, but no, I, I mean, I've only got those two pairs of super shoes and um, an X percent twos. Oh, that's a, that's a lie. I've still got my four percents actually, but they were never getting a run out. Um, they might actually be on the op shop shortly. So, um, you know, look out for those. Um, no, yeah, it was a pretty simple decision and I've, I've really enjoyed the, the next percent. So um, yet to, yet to put my feet in a pair of alphas. Um, so yeah. Remember. Interesting. Any, any reason? No, I, I guess just haven't made them and um, yep. yeah, have run in the next percent. So they've served me well. So I haven't, um, haven't sought them out and as you know they're, they're pretty dear so yeah. I, uh, yeah, I haven't felt the need sure. just yet yeah yeah no that, that's um that's fair so um what's what's next have you good have you given much thought like sort of what you want to do in terms of um racing and training um yeah i mean trying to just slowly get back into it over the next month or so probably build the workouts back up and then decide what i want to pick off long you know medium to to long term i guess but i'll run the city to surf if all things going according to plan um so i got my entry approved um uh, just before the goldie so I, I put it in just before the gold coast in case i wanted to back out um <laughs> after so i haven't actually bought my entry but um so the the seating's been approved which is good um and yeah, I think I'll do that and, yeah, just see what happens after that. Um, there's some discussion of um, going down to Melbourne as well, but I won't be going for the Mara if I am there. Um, so my, my turn to, to give you a shout-out on, on course if um, <laughs> if I am down there. But I've got uh, – I think at this stage you might have a clash of um, a clash of plans. got a good friend's 30th, so it could be a negotiation. Uh, okay. No, that's fair enough. Um, uh, before I ask the last question, Dom, do you want to – you're good. Nah, I'm all right. Yeah. So this, well, the last question is a little bit different because you're a return guest. But is this, <laughs> in terms of your favourite race, has it changed? Has it changed to this one or? To the um, that was pretty good. Yeah, I think. Um, uh, uh, it's a silly answer, or I guess it's a, it's a, you know, getting. Um, I have splinters in my ass for sitting on the fence, but like there's, uh, I think each race is sort of good in its own right. I really enjoyed Melbourne actually. Um, yeah. I still really, I really enjoyed the whole setup. Gold Coast bit different, um, probably a little more. They looked after me pretty well um, up there. I have to say it was yeah, it was good. That was kind of the first time I'd probably done like a, a seated type setup, and it was good. There's definitely upside to that. Um, so, yeah, look, I really enjoyed it. I think the thing I enjoyed about Melbourne, it felt like Cos Goldie is just out and back. <clears throat> there's like, I don't know, it's there's just something about a bit more of a loop. I think it's just mm. like a natural runner thing to enjoy a loop. A bit more <laughs> yeah. than out and back. Yeah. Um, but I, I did enjoy it. Um, I, that, that's it. I don't think anything will... Be, you'd be hard pressed to match um, my New York experience with any Australian race. So, um, yeah, yeah, just all in good time, I guess. But no, I certainly add it to the list, mate. It's it's up there now. Okay, sure. all right, we'll add it to the list. Well, uh, <laughs> well, thank you, thanks for joining, thanks for being generous with your time, um, and again, congratulations on breaking two thirty. And um, yeah, we'll we'll see you soon, and hopefully, we'll see you racing soon but i guess just take maybe just take some time to pull out <laughs> <laughs> i don't know <laughs> yeah, no, thank yeah. you very much the um yeah the last week's been good to me um yeah, it's nice to hang out with friends and and sleep in a little bit um and look congrats to you as well mate i, I know you had a cracking half um thank you you should be should be stoked with that as well um it's a great run and, and dom look mate the uh 
trying to attempt something like that off the back of COVID, uh, 100 <laughs> mile off the back of COVID. Um, you know, I'm with your mates who, who are sledging you. I've heard smarter ideas, I reckon. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, dear. I, uh, no, but I look forward to, very much look forward to seeing you back on the horse, mate. It'll, um, you know, you, I think every time we, uh, we tow the line together, it, um, it's a pretty close run thing. So excited yeah, about totally. whenever that next happens again. Definitely. Yeah. Thanks we'll so much. Yeah, thanks, Alex. It'll be after you join me in Melbourne, Dom. Okay. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>